Meanwhile, lower downhill, work proceeds by hand on a spectacular accumulation of bones. Scattered on a wall, like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, are half a dozen vertebrae. These are all no doubt vertebrae from the tail. Two bones, one upright, the other upside down, foot bones, and then crosswise, some ribs, one here, one there, then an almost complete one there in that direction. An enormous arm bone. Very exciting, that one. The humerus with its spatula. That's the top end. And it's seen from behind. It's hidden in the bed. We're barely at the end there, and that's very important because it's a large bone. The bones of these early sauropods are surprisingly large. A lab analysis of their structure will perhaps reveal the construction secrets of the giants that follow them. The framework that supported their colossal bodies must have been both lightweight and incredibly strong. This is the beginning of the stages of the uh, great radiation of dinosaurs. And for us in North America, these are specimens that we don't have. This fills a great missing link in the uh, Atlantic dinosaurs. So I think also it'll help North Americans realize that part of their patrimony is in Africa. And this will really drive the point home. And I think this is very important to us in North America. It's been a, a rather major day. I think it's a turning point. Hill, the fossil bed is about to reveal its secrets. Two perfectly preserved sauropod teeth stir hopes that a skull might be near. This metatarsal, a small bone in the foot, gives some indication of the size of its owner. There's more underneath. It's overwhelming. They're everywhere. The fact that dinosaurs ruled the Earth for 155 million years, they dominated from the Triassic to the Upper Cretaceous, so they were a great evolutionary success. And I'm always annoyed by people who say, oh, the dinosaurs, they were large, stupid, nasty animals that disappeared because they couldn't adapt. That's completely false. The success of the dinosaurs is a resounding, fantastic success in the history of the Earth. In the central Atlas Mountains, a sauropod trackway near the town of Demnat offers Michel Montbaron and Christian Meyer a rare opportunity to study dinosaur locomotion. The animal that left these tracks is similar in size to Atlasaurus. The prints are almost four feet long. Combined with the length of the stride, we can estimate the speed of the animal, and then uh, we'll measure the length right here. Just as the mud was drying, the dinosaurs passed by, leaving their footprints. When it dried completely, the prints were fossilized and preserved. During the next flood, or when they were covered by sediment, the dried footprints were preserved by the layer on top. I thought it ambled, but I'm not sure. Wait, amble, if you put down both right feet at the same time, then both left feet at the same time, like this, like this, isn't that it? The measurements are fed into a computer containing a mathematical formula for calculating speed. In addition to the size of the prints, Meyer also needs to know the distance between the prints or the animal's stride. Stride, RP 356. 356, good. 
Mayer calculates a speed of less than a mile an hour. Oui, OK, mais c'est pas rapide ça. Ah non, pas du tout. Clearly, it was a slow walker. But the size of the prints are also a clue to the size of the animal. The team estimates its haunches alone stood 15 feet tall. Could a dinosaur this large move any faster? Yes, uh, that could happen sometimes. It was able to reach speeds of three miles per hour, and in exceptional cases, almost seven an hour. But then you no longer see the prints of its hands. So this one was just taking a stroll along the beach. That's right. They are so well preserved, so fresh, eh? Fantastic. The tracks are so clear. It looks like the dinosaur passed this way only a few moments ago. Further on, the team discovers a new set of tracks, but these are different. There are one or two very interesting footprints here and you can make out the toes clearly. It's the footprint of a carnivore. Unfortunately, it left its calling card in a farmyard. The rest, if any, are buried under a pile of fertilizer. The team needs at least three prints to accurately measure the animal's stride. Then they can determine if it was walking or running and possibly what kind of dinosaur it was. This is a first. Manure ecology. It's a theropod. The ancestor of birds, you mean? That's right. If we continue to dig along this slope, at this level, we'll find the rest. That's it, it's working. Using the print as a starting point, draftsman Michel Fontaine has a good idea of what the foot may have looked like. 